हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल रिसर्च एंड फार्मा एंड टुडे विथ मी मिस्टर सुब्बा राव मिस्टर राव हैविंग द रिच एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ थर्टी प्लस इन इंजीनियरिंग सिस्टम एंड टुडे इज माई प्रिवलेजेस आई कैन इंट्रोड्यूस मिस्टर राव इन माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड वी हैव टू बी डिस्कस टूडे वाटर सिस्टम रिक्वायरमेंट इन फार्मा इंडस्ट्रीज एंड हाउ टू हैंडल सो वेलकम मिस्टर राव thank you mr prabhup for your introduction uh, so uh, mr rao why this water in osd facility of the pharmaceutical company which type of water is required yes in pharmaceutical industry especially solid oral doses we are using two kinds of waters one is potable water and second one is purified water so you feel any specific parameter uh, that is requirement as per the uh, pharmaceutical industry that can be used some specification a yeah, specific requirement which is required for water to use in the pharmaceutical industry yes of course when we are using directly into the man production we have to meet some specifications derived by us pharmaco pharmacopeia so any specific parameter if you yes. are like Can you, uh, the parameters control? like yes. conductivity, pH, total organic carbons, and bacteria must be monitored and controlled. So, any specific design like for uh, like how to design the water system yes. that can be uh, give proper like you are saying some specification of conductivity yes. and some pH meter and micro also you are saying the requirement. Yes. 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 So yes. any specific design of the water system is required for the pharma industry. Yes. Before designing the pharmaceutical water plant, we need to identify the source from where we are getting mm -hmm. the water. Okay. 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 Based on the source specifications, we need to design the pharmaceutical water plant. so uh, any like uh, as per your experience because your rich experience and i want my viewers has to be understand what type of resources like available yes for the water that can be used in the pharmaceutical industries yes we have no open wells and bore wells and rivers these are all the sources for raw water so in india like uh, we are uh, we can discuss in india pharmaceutical industry which type of source water is available normally if you see for 50% like like yes. yeah most of the companies are using bore wells and open wells okay okay so uh, when you are designing uh, the water system yes so there is some input is also important of the water yes of course so those are raw water specifications mm -hmm. like hardness conductivity ph these are and bacterial count these four need to be considered before designing any water plant. so can you just explain to our viewers like uh, how how we have to be design one system based on the desired specification like you cannot say like everywhere you can get uh, water as per specification will be same it may be uh, some area if you see north south we have different states and different pharma industries like in the different states so everywhere i i i believe there will be different of the input water so how how you treat the water the output will be same like you are saying we have some specification and output water should be matched the specification yes then how you consider this input water yes so based on the severity or uh, importance of the specifications in the raw water the treatment need to be designed for example if hardness is more than 500 ppm we cannot use softener If hardness is less than 500 ppm, we can use a softener. So, similar way for other parameters also, we need to use different kind of process. So, can you can you just uh, tell us like any design, uh, like how the water will come, how to treat it from yes. starting yes. to end of the purified water? Sure. So, in in our pharmaceutical industry, we treat water in two segments. One is called potable water, or pre-treatment. The treatment is called as a pre-treatment. and second one is purified water so in potable water water will be fed into a multi grade filter and later it will be passed to softeners and it will be passed to ultra filtration in multi grade filter basically it will remove the suspended solids of the water then it will be pumped to softener where we can remove the hardness of the water later softener water 
I mean, the hardness removed water will be pumped out to ultra filtration, where we can remove suspended solids to some extent, and we can reduce the silt density index of the water. The silt density index, if it is less than five, it will help us to safeguard the reverse osmosis membranes, where this EF water is going to be fed. So, any specific, like you told, uh, initially we have to be clear the suspended solids. Yes. So, uh, for then after that, because you are saying some multi-grade filter, correct? Yes, of course. So, this multi-grade filter has to be removed some suspended solids and then it will go to softener. Yes. So, uh, then any specification like uh, how to be control this uh, multi-grade filter to softener, the any requirement like uh, when uh, when we can say that now my water is ready to go to softener. Yes. So here no after multi-grade filter there is no barrier automatically water will go into the softener. Oh. The only thing we are monitoring in the multi-grade filter is the pressure difference between input and output water. Okay. Okay. okay if the pressure difference is more we can suspect that the mat the water is having more suspended solids in the in the water. Okay. Okay. So because the suspended solid is very high then they will pressurize your filter and no, they will choke they will choke our filter it uh -huh. won't pressurize okay. if the filter is got choked the pressure difference between before filter and after filter will be more uh -huh. okay uh -huh. so so there is no analytical requirement only we yes. have to be check the pressure yes then yes. after that it will go to yes. softener yes. so uh, when you uh, move to softener so after softener any specification in requirement of course yeah. of course before softener we used to measure the hardness and after softening process, we used to measure the hardness. Mm -hmm. There must be reduction in the hardness. Our expectations of hardness after softener is less than 5 ppm. Less than 5 ppm? Yes. So, we will go out like it's very... Of course, of course. That is the process of softener and we will get the desired parameter of 5 ppm, less than 5 ppm. So, uh, like uh, there were one near two softener required, series of softener only one is more than sufficient. It depends on our requirement and on our process. If you required continuous uh, water, we have to go for two hours. Uh -huh. Two softeners, sorry, two softeners. So, you are saying this depends uh, what is the requirement, like yes. uh, how, how much your manufacturing facility is based. Yes, yes. If and you, how much yes. storage capacity we have. Uh -huh. so, okay. Uh, based mm -hmm. on that, we need to design one softener or two softeners. Okay, okay. So, if you are having continuous production and if you need, if you have a demand of continuous soft water, then we will go for two softeners and one work, one will be a, as working one and another will be, another one will be as standby one. Okay, yes. okay. So, that, that, so always flow will be there for the manufacturing. Manufacturing, process. yes. Yeah, okay. And after the softener, it will go to? Uh, ultra filtration. Ultra filtration. So, yes. you are saying here you have to be removed some dissolved particle? Yes, no. of course. Uh -huh. So, there are any... Uh, TDS like total dissolved particle there any requirement like no here it won't reduce uh, t uh, total dissolution much but it will reduce the uh, silt density index that means it's caused by uh, silica kind of uh, components so that parameter called silica density index so, uh, silt silt yeah of course it's called silt density index so, silk density silt yes silt okay. silt density okay. index. sorry silt density yes. index okay yeah, yeah. so the silt density index that has to be monitored online no that is offline test we have to do so there is a silt density index tester is there uh -huh. by using that we can measure the sda okay and then after that uh, can i uh, say like this our uh, water is ready of course it is ready for uh, next Re next treatment okay so what next course the... of treatment that is called a purified water treatment okay so now purified water after that any other treatment like... yes of course of course there is a treatment process after ultra filtration water will be sent to reverse osmosis uh -huh. okay okay Re Re reverse ro, Os Re RO. it's not reverse osmosis people used to say it's ro uh -huh. the process is called as a reverse osmosis okay so if there uh, ro like uh, what function ro is doing yes ro basically it will remove the total dissolved solids it will reduce the total dissolved okay, solids. Okay. So, okay, I did miss. So, RO is for that uh, total dissolved solids. Yes. It's removed. Yes, yes. It will. Uh -huh. Great. Yes. And after RO? After RO, if our conductivity is less than 20 micro siemens per centimeter, we can feed to electrode deionization unit called EDI. 
ओके सो यू आर सेइंग इट्स आवर कंडक्टिविटी शुड बी लेस देन 20 माइक्रो सीमेंस यस पर सेंटीमीटर पर माइक्रो सेंटीमीटर पर सेंटीमीटर इफ इट इज लेस देन माइक्रो सेंटीमीटर माइक्रो सेमेंस सेमेंस पर सेंटीमीटर इट विल गो इन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप अदर इट विल कम बैक टू आर नो नो वी आर वी आर गोइंग टू डिप्लाई वन मोर आर ओ टू फर्दर रिड्यूस द टीडीएस टू 20 कंडक्टिविटी टू 20 माइक्रो सेमेंस पर सेंटीमीटर ओके सो व्हिच इफ इफ रिक्वायर वी हैव टू बी सीरीज ऑफ आर ओ यस and then finally has to become as the less than 20 yes yes okay. that is a desirable even if you get less than 10 also it's very good but uh, basically less than 20 is essential okay then uh, can i say now it's my purified water is ready yes after passing through edi uh -huh. our purified water conductivity will be around 0.5 micro siemens per centimeter based on the age of the um, edi unit okay so you are saying now purified water is ready and our TOC is also I believe less than 5000? 500 ppb. Huh. Okay, so that requirement is less than 500 ppb. Yes. Okay, and any conductivity specific requirement? Yes, after e day the conductivity should be less than 1.3 micro siemens per centimeter at 25 degrees temperature. Okay, so uh, now my purified water is ready. Yes. Now I, that has to be moved to manufacturing. No, no, no. no? Here mm -hmm. what we will do after producing purified water from edi this will be pumped to a purified water distribution tank okay uh -huh. so here what we are going to do we are going to circulate the purified water not to allow any growth of bacteria so uh, so this uh, tank where we are uh, having the purified water its automatic circulation is continue in the yes, tank yes of itself? course of course uh -huh. So we, we we are going to lay one pipe through user points of all production areas mm -hmm. and that water will be pumped to those areas and written, written back to the purified water distribution tank. Okay, so what I understand there was one tank where we uh, with all the purified water storage yes. and there is some line where you every is go to the every, every user point, every user point and, and we'll come back to the tank. Then again come back to the tank. Yes. If it is come back to the tank, it requires some specification before going to tank, otherwise it will be drained out like any... No, no, no. no. It's not any draining kind of thing, it's a continuous circulation. Uh -huh. Okay, while retaining from the production user points, we are going to measure two parameters. One is flow. Okay. And second one is conductivity. Okay, so that automatically there is some online... Uh... Flow meter is there. Uh, why flow meter is required? We are going to measure the velocity. I mean, we are going to find out the velocity of the water. So there is a minimum requirement of uh, velocity is required in purified water distribution, not to uh, allow any bacteria uh, growth or what you call uh, fungal yeah, bacteria, any other growth like uh, no, okay. not growth and it should not attach to the pipelines walls of the pipelines okay so you are saying it, it should not uh, condensate like not we not condensate it, it should not uh, uh, sustain somewhere. sustain somewhere in the ah, pipeline continue should be drained yes, yes if it is no, uh, not drained it should be circulation, circulation. Uh -huh. okay to so, achieve that movement there should be a uh, turbulent flow in the water okay to attain that the turbulent flow minimum velocity requirement is 1.2 meter per second okay so what i understand any valve the valve has to be made such a way. Wall, wall, pipeline wall. I'm saying yeah. pipeline wall. So there will be no storage of water. It should be continuous circulation. No, no. That is one thing, and we should not give any chance to bacteria to okay. stick it to the wall. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. So any other treatment, like in 15 days, any uh, like uh, that. You of have course, to, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, if unfortunately, if there is any bacteria, is catching to the walls of the pipe. Every 15 days, we need to do sanitation. Okay, so there was a sanitization program. Yes. That's uh, that any specific temperature required for. Of sanitation. course, we are maintaining uh, above 80 degrees. Above 80 degree. Uh -huh. So that will be a 30 a time. Like uh, sorry, if there was some time defined, like 30 minutes will be rotated. 45 minute. minutes minimum. It is recommendable okay. to circulate the water at 80 degrees temperature throughout the loop. Okay, so 80 degree and 45 minutes. Yes. Uh, this this is all industry practice, like somebody doing 50 also, like. Yes, this. some people are doing one hour also. One, one hour, hour one also. also. Uh -huh. And so, what do you feel like? What is the normal practice in industry? Is 45 minutes? Yeah. yeah, as for me, 45 minutes is good enough. Okay, okay, okay. And now uh, I think uh, that's really great. 
only this question was coming in my mind any challenges you find during this complete water system generation yeah the development yeah industry yes of yes. course if you are you know, getting water from the open sources open wells and all seasonally there will be a lot of change in the water input parameters so we should be <coughs> ready to face those parameters challenges and our water system should design with the variances of the input parameters mm -hmm. so you are saying there will be variation in between yes. the like there will different like sometime winter summer in the rainy season. seasons you no know, water automatically it will be contaminated through uh, soil and all okay so we should be ready to face those challenges okay uh -huh. so how like okay so you are saying our system should be designed such a way yes okay. all like in between winter summer rainy season the yes. water is coming but output should be same yes sir there will be no compromise no, 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 no. and you are thinking anything like you want to be say uh, like any like we have discussed challenges so any recommendation because the practice is with so many years people are doing water systems so you want to be say new thing like uh, some recommendation and anything you want to be share with our viewers Yes, of course. So traditionally, we are using uh, sodium hypochlorite as a disinfectant. Instead of that, we can use ultraviolet uh, rays mm -hmm. for disinfectant for disinfectant disinfectation. So because of this, now we can save the chemical usage and we can save some water, and it's an easy process. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, great. So uh, I think uh, I believe. Uh, we have got so very good uh, interaction with mr uh, rao and we got so many things uh, still if you people having some questions you can put in the comments because in the comment section you if you have any question related to be water system especially for our pharma industry you can uh, put your comments and mr rao will give the answer of the your questions and we are really happy if we got so many questions from your side and i want this session which uh, already i try to be conduct because uh, i'm i'm quality person and uh, mr rao is having more than 30 plus of rich years of experience in the pharma industry and water system and other area so we get very good uh, interaction today it's really thanks mr rao thanks uh, to join us and i am uh, in future also i got so much support and definitely we'll we'll, go, we'll do further yeah yeah so let's wait for next video with mr rao to have another session for related to be injury thanks thanks for watching my video thanks a lot Thank